Um, we're talking about infrastructure as a service, private clouds, okay, and it's multi-component. OpenStack is a bunch of software, not just one. We have software to do compute as a service, storage as a service, networking as a service. We'll be covering detail by, uh, by Amen. Bare metal provisioning, you have a website, you have an identity module, and other stuff. Okay, so pretty much a foundational layer of infrastructure as a service, and then extra services on the top, including database as a service. We have uh, alarming monitoring orchestration. You will see also data processing. You will see uh, file service, yeah, file, no, shared file system as a service. You will see that later. And it's made to be scalable and to grow up to thousands, okay? You know the pitch? Why OpenStack? Again, very big uh, clouds. You can build on your data center or for your development team. You can grow from, let's say, from four servers to 4,000, and it's pretty much the same structure. Everything is, auto is uh, you can automate everything. You have APIs and, and programming languages, bindings to do pretty much whatever you can do with API. You can do it with a command line tool, with a graphical tool, with uh, SDKs like Puppet, Chef, Ansible, um, Python. You can automate the automation engine. So everything can be automated here, right? Um, just a, a small reminder, uh, scale up versus scale out. You will see uh, a scale out concept as in adding more nodes and more compute or more storage. You will see those reference often. And most of the features that we are uh, incorporating to the code base uh, on every new version is to increasing the scalability. So faster, better, more secure, okay, and streamlined in general. Um, by the way, rumor has it that Kilo is like the one that that scales the most since ever, even though it has more projects. There was some bumps in the, in the course of OpenStack in which we bloated a bit the software. Now it's quite fast, right? And you can enable all of it and don't have any performance impacts because of enabling of all, the, all the features. So just a small company pitch. Uh, there is a open source project called Triple O, which is OpenStack on OpenStack. And Red Hat has in, improved it. It's everything upstream. But now you can also install OpenStack with their, their own OpenStack, sorry, their, their own automation that OpenStack um, has. Let me rephrase that. You can use OpenStack to install OpenStack. Now, we call that director. Upstream, you will find it as uh, RDO manager, and it's a bundle of triple, triple O and other software components. The cool thing about it, and you can try it to, tonight if you want on RDO website, is that you are learning OpenStack while installing OpenStack. There's no need for a third-party tool. There's no need for new automation engines. Um, so try it out. OK, just going to save you the, the pitch. So for you to know that there are um, extra add-ons like that validates what you're doing in real time, like validation if everything runs as fast as they should, if the hard drives run fast or not. Uh, functionality testing as well, like checking if an API works or not after you have installed it. And also, you will manage life cycle, as in upgrades. Um, it's notoriously hard to upgrade OpenStack. It's gotten way better with these things, with Triple O and, hit, uh, and all the tools that we have uh, merged upstream. Um, now, for the actual what's new in Kilo, we call this 7. On Red Hat, it's version 7. Just don't mind the, the brands. I don't brought my Red Hat t-shirt today. I'm OpenStack. Uh, but this is called Kilo upstream. It was released, what, three months ago? Um, now it's like the first maintenance release already ha has happened. Many bug fixes were corrected. But uh, the main uh, idea about uh, Nova, which is the compute, the, co the software that does compute as a service, this is what it does in general. Feel free to read it, ho those who doesn't know it. Now, you guys who are experts already in OpenStack, what Kilo brings, uh, a way better support of Ironic. Now you can really do bare metal provisioning and have a database filled with all your bare metal uh, instances. So commissioning, decommissioning, discovering nodes, doing power on, power off operations, all that stuff is already fully supported. The first releases, they only supported, let's say, on and off, but not reboot, let's say. Okay, now you have all the IPMI portfolio. You can also change IPMI by other drivers like HP, uh, ILO, and DRAC and all that stuff. Um, also, I, um, the NFV specific functionality, ask me if you want more details. I, we already covered that in last meetup. But those are functionalities that allows a virtual machine to perform as fast as a bare metal machine for all kind of workloads, not just for the good ones. Okay, We have proved 
We have proven with Intel upstream, we have done some, some shows precisely two weeks ago at the NFV uh, something in San, San Francisco and the I, Intel Development Forum. We have achieved in the worst case scenario you can imagine like very small packets for network and, and storage um, with multiple CPUs interacting with, with memory on different memory banks, it's called NUMA. Even in that situation, we achieved 98% 98 performance compared to bare metal. Best case scenario, you have, you have in almost 99.9% .9 of bare metal performance. So that's the underlying layer of uh, the compute. So it's KVM in the case of, of, of Red Hat. You will have uh, vCenter or vSphere, actually ESXi with uh, VMware. You have Zen server, you will have uh, Hyper-V with Microsoft. But at least we're happy in the Linux community that with KVM, and you can try with CentOS or Scientific Linux or Fedora, and Ubuntu and uh, SUSE, those are the ones that ship KVM, and you will see 100, almost 100% performance on your KVM nodes, and everything can be automated with Nova. Okay, so more details, I can cover that later with drinks on hand. Networking, there is a very big addition now, it's called distributed arbitrary routing, routing. okay? Um, I'm, not, I'm not explaining this here, and he will explain that later. One cool addition, port security per port, uh, something that as in everything in OpenStack, before it was one parameter that applied to the whole installation. So it's either or on off for absolutely everybody. Now we can do it dynamically. With an API call per port, you can disable security groups. If anybody doesn't know what security groups are, yeah, I refer to the Amazon definition. You got security groups on Amazon EC2. It, by default, you only allow secure shell incoming. If you don't want anything at all, no filter whatsoever, you can disable that with the API. Use case here, I want to build a router. I want to build a switch on my virtual machine. I want to boot it up. I have no filtering whatsoever on my network card. Just give me the packets. Do, you, you, it sounds like a reasonable request. Well, it, it couldn't be done earlier. It was either on or off for all, all the tenants. So another thing that we have improved, full IPv, IPv6, we covered that on the other uh, releases. We had tenant support for IPv6 on some topologies for rega regarding DHCP and router advertisement, RA. So some combinations of, 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 of both regarding who has the DNS, who has the DHCP, if it's a stateful or stateless. Now it's f the whole portfolio. There are like three entities, right, on, off each, so two times three, eight combinations, right? So we had like three or four combinations, now we have the eight combinations. You can do them all. You can also deploy OpenStack using IPv6. Very cool if you live in a country with no IPv4. We are super lucky on that term. And those from us, of us you, that you come, let's say, from Asia or Africa, it sounds better. But we, here in the, in the Canada and States, we don't have this problem much, right? But out there in, in Asia, for instance, they are literally out of IPv4. They, they needed this. They couldn't deploy OpenStack without IPv4. So now they have it. Load balance is a service now embeds SSL uh, certifications, um, uh, certificates. And there is also additions that I will show here. There is a project to allow uh, keep storing secrets or certificates in OpenStack, but I'm not going to explain this today. Block storage. Um, cool thing, backups have been really improved. Now you have an API to define. I want a, a, a live snapshot of my volume. What you had before was pretty much EBS version 2008, in which you had to take off a volume and do a cold snapshot. Now, finally, in 2015, we have something in OpenStack, you can do a hot snapshot without removing or disconnecting the, the hard drive from your VM. So now we have this, and you can also define the target saying, I want the output of this snapshot. I, don't, I mean, I don't want to put the backup in the same system I'm backing up, right? So put the backup elsewhere for protection. Now you can finally do this. It's a, it's a long-awaited feature. Uh, iSCSI multipath, also very cool for reliability purpose. In production, you almost never put one only, only one iSCSI path. You put many, like different network links or different network adapters. Now you can finally define that. And the private volume times, I don't even know what that is. So object storage, I don't know if anybody here knows or uses object storage much from Swift. Yeah, good, you do. So as always, m improvements that go beyond the, the stability purpose. It's super stable, running production forever. Um, latest changes involve, you see, composite tokens and service accounts. This is Keystone, actually. 
Yeah, so they, they leverage composite tokens from Keystone, so you can do that also with Swift. You can leverage those composite tokens. Replication and um, the reducing. OK, there's something that is missing here. Sorry, I forgot. Um, Erasure codes. Erasure codes, something that was presented on Juno. It has been improved now. It's considered stable and, and mature. I think it was 2.2.0 that showed in Erasure codes. For those who are not familiar with it, Swift, instead of, replace, of replicating one picture of yours uh, three times on three different servers, now it's going to do a hashing algorithm and, uh, and add uh, Erasure coding bits, pretty much what the same algorithm that you use on CD-ROMs, uh, CD audio, actually. It's a 50% overhead. But you can, if you lose one copy, you can still recover the whole content from the whatever it's available from your single copy plus the 50% overhead that is elsewhere. Effectively speaking, you don't need three times the capacity. You only need 150%, so one times and a half. It is super cool. The expense here, the problem that is that you need a lot of compute to do the, hash, the hashing and the calculation and removing it back. Anyways, this thing is stable now, and anybody using Swift in production should definitely look at the resource coding. And what else? Image storage, glance. The only thing that I re that I referred as a change is that you can you can convert images on the fly. It was notoriously cumbersome and slow glance. Let's say you had a Fedora or like Ubuntu image so cool in your laptop, one gigabyte, and you say, OK, now I have all my software here. Let's upload it to Glance as a QCO format, but I want to put it in RAW, which is, let's say, 20 gigabytes, because it's faster than to, you know, you don't have to decompress the image, and I want everything not, not theme provision. I want it uh, fully provisioned in advance for performance. When you did that, thinking that performance would be better, what you were asking to Glance was, can you stream a file that is zipped to the compute node, then unzip it locally, which means on a temporary folder, then upload it to your whatever shared storage you have, like Ceph or NFS or, or ISCSI, and then tell Nova there are, there are your 20 gigabytes of data. It was very slow. What we're doing now, it's directly on the Glance server. We're taking the gigabyte compressed image, sending the raw file to the shared storage, and telling whatever Nova nodes are, there are your 20 gigabytes of shared storage for your volume. Do a thin copy, uh, sorry, a, a thin provisioning, so a new volume on the, on the storage side, and it's immediate like this. You get like, like thin provisioning on the server side. I'm, and by server, I mean the storage server side. So all in all, you can have immediate boot ups, whereas earlier it was like 20 minutes for the first booting, for the fir first boot, and the, second, the others were like faster. Metadata, metadata, uh, nah, not really in interesting. Safe integration improved as always. This thing, copy volume to image function, is the uh, counterpart at, in Ceph that allows what I just told. Asking Ceph, can you theme provision an image from an, a volume from an image? Then Ceph, yes, yeah, bring it on. I'm just going to mark it as dirty, and the template becomes the hard drive, and it's zero cost operation. So Ceph tells you, yeah. Whatever the, the, this drive you want to use, if it's like a terabyte vo image, I don't need to create another terabyte volume. I'm just going to point to the source and do it's a, it's a, a, a of its copy volume to image function, but it actually uses the zero copy function internally, something like that. I don't really get the internals. The good news is that it has now been extended to be merged with OpenStack. Identity, two big changes. You can now build federation Keystone services. So use case here, you have an office with a data center in Montreal. The other one is in Toronto. You have your own local storage for accounts and usernames and password. Effectively, if, if it were two different companies, but you want an employee to be able to launch images on both. Before, you needed two usernames and two passwords. Now, because of SAML, you can delegate the identity provider and let's say request to I'm a, I'm a Toronto employee. I can ask to the, Toronto, to the Montreal region, hey, I'm a guy from Toronto. Just give me a VM because I'm, a, I'm allowed. So I'm, I'm not going to tell you who am I. Sorry, I'm just going to tell you who am I. I'm not going to tell you my password. You're going to figure out internally if my password is OK. So they're going to send some requests on the back end, and they're going to say, thumbs up. You are allowed to do X amount of operations here. This is your quota as a, as a, as a visitor, right? So this federation is pretty powerful. 
it will allow an effective federation of OpenStack clouds, which is quite cool if you're on an enterprise and you have islands, let's say developer team A, development team B, and for, let's say, integration purposes, you know, you have your own development pools and you want to do an integration project, you don't have to wait for IT to provide you credentials and why not, you could just provision that on the back end and just tell the core as, as a profile for everybody. So it's something that will have small effects in, in private clouds and a much bigger effect if we go public. Let's say you have HP Cloud, you have Rackspace, or you have SoftLayer, and you want to use the three of them for disaster recovery purpose, you only have to pay one guy and they will deal internally who sends the checks to each other, right? So something that will appear soon. Uh, single sign-on, it's another cool thing. And the support for, it, for electrical multi-ownership, it's something that um, allows to delegate who is the owner of a tenant. So uh, taking my example earlier of development teams, you have one manager, like the development manager, right? And he says, you are a good developer, you have 20 VMs, you are a bad one, you only have 10 VMs. Um, the fact that I can say so, I'm a manager, but who gives me the authorization to be a manager? Before, I couldn't. It, you had to be the actual operator of the cloud. You have to know all the details and the settings and the, and the you have to own the system, but I'm a development manager. I don't want to deal with that. Now, because of this, IT can be the owner of the cloud. I can be the manager and only tell my guys what are their quotas, so act as a middle manager effectively. So this is now possible with uh, Keystone and OpenStack in general. One last remark, Silometer has been improved. Uh, we are actually um, embedding a new project that allows faster um, time series database. Um, what else? Sahara, the data processing, which is Hadoop, it has also some improvements, in, especially the integration with the ironic services I mentioned, which is obvious. Who wants to deploy bare metal instances on a cloud? Well, those who actually use the hell out of the servers, right? High performance computing, big, big data, and pff, I don't know what else. So, so the fact that Sahara now allows to work with metal machines using OpenStack, that's pretty cool, in my opinion. That will allow companies that are right now deploying manually, I guess, in their own isolated environment, uh, big, big data workloads. Now they are in, in potential, they could use the same systems as, as the development team or whoever is using OpenStack internally. The orchestration service it has also been improved quite a lot. Um, and just two other, or well, three other projects that I would like to explain, other than the core projects, are Trove, which is database as a service. You can have MySQL or Postgres or Oracle, I think, um, as a database provider, and OpenStack allows you an API, pretty much with Amazon RDS does, to give me, a, to tell him, I want a new database, I want a new connector, I want, uh, I don't know, with, the, the replication setting this way or whatnot. So the language is defined on the API. The drivers will do whatever they need to do with MySQL or Postgres or Oracle. You, you kind of don't know that. What is cool to me is that if you ever want to play with different databases engines on your company, you don't need now to hire a MySQL specialist, a Postgres speciali specialist, and an Oracle specialist. You could try with Trove and say, hey, give me one of each. Then I will try my application and decide which one goes to production. Um, the other use case would be like, um, I simply don't want to have extra workload to my DBA because I only have one. So ba very basic operations of provisioning databases, I will leave, leave it to Trove and I only want one person dealing with the production database. Designate uh, has been improved. I think there are now two providers. Initially it was Bind, now I think it's DNS Musk. And there was a commercial one, I forgot the name. Uh, Blue Box? Oh, no, that's an IPM. It's an EPAM, right? Anyways, it has been improved, more providers, and I honestly don't know what are the changes coming on, on SP7. And Manila, this is cool. This is something that appeared a year ago uh, upstream. I think I covered that already once, but just to say the obvious, now it's considered mature, and you can have share file system as a service, so an API to define, I want an NFS share with these settings, with these permissions, and this structure and why not? You have NFS, CIFS, like Windows shares, ClusterFS, and others. Also, worth saying that in Vancouver, everybody was like containers, yeah, right? So Docker was everywhere on the titles. There was a new announcement about Project Magnum, which is containers using OpenStack. There, are, there were some projects already 
being done in the community called Cola, for instance. Cola is a project for deploying OpenStack using containers. As I said, it's something that Red Hat took, doesn't, didn't took as a main strategy. We took triple O as a main strategy. Now they are converging. Now they're going to have triple O using containers, maybe in the next release or in, in a year from now. The cool thing is that there are improvements for HIT also to deploy Kubernetes clusters. And improvements as in a new API called Magnum, in which it will leverage Nova directly to provision a Docker-friendly Docker -friendly VM. There is kind of different strategies going at the same time. I'm hoping maybe next time we can do a better overview of containers in OpenStack. I'm not the guy to do so. So just as a quick saying, if anybody really wants to cover this point, I'm glad to offer uh, information, and somebody else can digest it. And I hope somebody comes up with a good presentation for the next time. OK, so just leave it there. Think about it. If anybody wants to present containers on OpenStack next time, that will be a very cool subject. And that's all. So 